Welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Sunny Makija and I'm a senior inside sales specialist at Crave Infotech. Uh, before we get started, I'm going through some housekeeping to ensure you can interact with myself and the speaker. Uh, firstly, if you wish to ask the presenter a question, we have a QA and a and a chat feature enabled. And uh, we will also be launching poll in today's webinar. We uh, invite you to participate by selecting your response when they appear on your screen. And we will be having a Q&A session at the end to answer your questions. Now, I would like to welcome Tom and Shrikant. Uh, we are uh, so glad you could be here today to share your insight on delivering next generation intelligent asset management for SAP customer. Uh, Tom uh, is a global lead in solution management for SAP asset and service management portfolio, which includes solution across maintenance and service operations, as well as asset performance management. In this role, Tom works with customers looking to expand their business processes for maintenance, planning, execution, and uh, scheduling to the broader topic of lifecycle asset management. Uh, Tom has over 15 years of experience with SAP holding position in professional services, development and solution management. And we have uh, Shrikant from Crave Infotech. He is a digital transformation enthusiast, experience in SAP digital core, enterprise asset management, enterprise mobility and cloud platform. Uh, Shrikant has 27 plus years of industry experience, helping organization in wide range of experience with technology and technological changes for multiple line of business. Now, without uh, further ado, I would hand over to Tom to start the presentation. Over to you, Tom. Very good. Thank you so much, Sonny, for the kind introduction. And Shrikant, it's good to be on the call with you today. I am here. know that uh, we have a lot of good information that we're going to start with. So I believe you're going to bring uh, the slides yeah. up. Is that yeah. correct? Our, yeah. From my side. So very good if we go back to the beginning. So uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining here today. As Sonny mentioned, my name is Tom Kurtz. I'm from SAP. I'm part of a function we call uh, solution management, and I work really with our product field, uh, sorry, our product development teams with our field organizations. And so I, you may have heard me on some, some previous webinars. It's good to be able to join this one with our uh, partner and colleague at, at Crave Infotech and with Shrikan. So to start, I'm just going to spend probably 15 minutes or so level setting on what how, how we at SAP look at the asset management world um, I, I touch on service management in there, field service management as well, but we're going to focus primarily on asset management, what we're doing in the operator maintenance world, and really the, the, the solutions we go to market with and, and kind of that umbrella view that will hopefully successfully set up uh, my colleague Shrikant to go into more detail uh, about some of the solutions and, and value that, that Crave Infotech is bringing to customers within that portfolio. So this first slide that we have up on the screen here really gets at the challenges that we're, we're seeing. Maybe there are opportunities if you look at them the right way, but there's some of the trends that we're seeing, some of the challenges that we're seeing in this market today. And, and I'll just summarize these very quickly as I go through. But uh, the, first, the first one is we're seeing a lot of changing of roles in the market. So you, when you think of the stakeholders that you have in this, in this world of asset management, you have manufacturers, you have operators of the equipment, you have service providers and so forth. Those are blending a bit now. You have manufacturers who also want to act as service providers by providing a service function. You have manufacturers who are looking at incremental business models like product as a service. So they don't want to sell a product to an end operator. They want to uh, sell a subscription, which means they are going to operate the equipment. So the world of that is blending and the need to, 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 to deal with those, inc uh, those increasingly complex products and services are there. Uh, from an APM perspective, we have this need to, to be able to more dynamically. So this is where the challenge is there's a static nature today in terms of how we do reactive maintenance policies, develop reactive maintenance policies. What we want to be able to do, what, what companies want to be able to do is develop these asset strategies up front, be able to segment assets differently, to treat different, to do risk and criticality, to understand how we want to treat different batches of assets, but we want to be able to dynamically integrate that downstream with our maintenance policies and processes. Um, the inability to uh, connect in order to do that, you want to be able to connect the devices 
and be able to um, uh, to be able to, to 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 capture that information smartly from from those assets. And uh, you want to be able to do that not just between asset management, your, your, your asset and your maintenance systems, but you want to be able to do that across the organization. So that's another challenge is we have silos today across the larger enterprise. Uh, and then when we look at resources, those resources can be constrained in different ways. They uh, are constrained because they want to be more remote. They're constrained because we need to make keep them safer than we do today. So that empowerment of workers uh, to be able to do that uh, succinctly and, and efficiently is important. So if I summarize across these different challenges, you see the ability, the need to integrate. You need to integrate between your e APM and e EAM solutions. You need to be integrate, be able to integrate across your enterprise into your support functions as well, like finance and HR. And you need to be able to integrate across the larger business networks between stakeholders. You need to be able to uh, connect to your de devices and be able to, to look at things intelligently. And you need to be able to empower your workers and, and, and be able to, to enable them. So as we continue on then um, to, to what this really means from a capabilities perspective, we have we need capabilities to be able to do that. For those dynamic changing worker uh, paradigms, you need to be able to collaborate across the processes and business partners. You need to be able to do that across business networks. You need to be able to, as we mentioned, dynamically integrate your asset performance management systems, your APM systems and processes with your maintenance and field service processes. And you need to make that a closed loop process so that it can continue to feed back in, in an iterative fashion. You need to be able to connect to your assets through Industry 4.0 technologies. Uh, you need to be able to integrate your maintenance and service operations across the larger enterprise, removing those silos we talked about. You need to be able to synchronize the, and optimize how you plan, schedule, and execute your maintenance work, your work order management, your service order management. And you need to be able to integrate your EHS systems and you uh, leverage mobility to empower your workers remotely. So these are really on the left side here, those major capabilities that we have. And actually, sorry, if, if you kind of you just go back real quick. Yeah, and then on the right side, this is how we represent that visually, being able to sync together your asset man asset performance management systems with and, and capabilities with your maintenance and service operation capabilities and then extend that beyond the enterprise to your stakeholder group through asset networking collaboration. So now as we go to the next uh, slide, this is just another view that I'll, I'll quickly cover, but this is, again, looking at it from a business process standpoint. So when you look at that, whether it be a lead to cash scenario for the field service example, or the, uh, the need to, to look at, at asset investment, asset uh, uh, challenges that, that come up there through uh, a work order process, go through the, the service and maintenance strategy management, onto planning, onto execution, onto uh, all the way back again, and, and being able to, to tie all those closed loop processes together. And then you see all those complementary processes that touch it on the outside that we talked about in terms of whether that be finance and HR or procurement or other parts of the supply chain manufacturing and so forth. So just another view that, that you can kind of see how we try to integrate the strategy and planning together. So continuing with the next slide then, um, I wanna to just touch on these capabilities in a little bit lower level. Uh, and, and Shrikant's gonna, I know, gonna go a little bit more into depth at, at what Crave Infotech is doing around these solutions. But if I take each of these capabilities one by one, so specifically, the asset and networking and collaboration, our ability to have a business network that uh, that is cloud-based, that allows people to subscribe to that, that that creates a centralized uh, data re uh, repository that's allowing to share that master data between systems, be able to to connect through assets to support these new business models that are being created. Um, these are all examples of of needing to have a system. We call it Asset Intelligence Network. We'll touch on that here in a moment. So we go to the next slide, continuing on through the circle and looking at the different uh, uh, 
the different capabilities that we have there. The next one is around asset strategy and performance management. So this is where you get it at those risk and criticality, reliability management methods and processes that we touched on, the, the need to be able to look, rank your assets differently, score them differently, and thus develop maintenance policies and plans differently for those different systems. Um, being able to, to create recommendations on how to handle certain uh, maintenance plans and then have that flow seamlessly downstream and integrate with your EAM systems. As we continue the, the next one, uh, the ability to have asset health prediction and optimization. So again, this is where we get into predictive maintenance, the connectivity of the assets that we talked about, leveraging technologies like IoT to be able to connect to those devices, ingest that data, and then be able to do something with that data once you have that, whether it be run machine learning algorithms against it, be able to run predictive simulation, uh, physics-based simulation models against it if you happen to have those. So a lot of good opportunities there to complement the maintenance policies with predictive maintenance. As we go to the next slide, continuing around the, the capabilities there, now we're looking more on the maintenance and service operations side. So whether you're looking at this from a asset operator perspective where you're maintaining your own equipment or you're looking at it through a field service model where you're servicing your customer's equipment, uh, a lot of the cap core capabilities are the same. You wanna look at some planning and orchestration of the work that's coming in there. So how do I look at uh, categorizing, putting planning buckets together to maintain my, that and, and understand and prioritize that service and backlog? How do I screen the demand appropriately in order to do that, build the appropriate work packages? As I continue to the next slide then, beyond planning and orchestration, uh, the next would be scheduling and dispatching. So how do I schedule that work accordingly, find the right resources to be able to do that, optimize those resources, dispatch them effectively, uh, look at their calendars, know uh, the coordination. Can I use optimization, uh, AI optimization capabilities to do this in a more augmented fashion if I have kind of a larger uh, a workforce base that I'm managing? So that idea of scheduling, the capabilities around scheduling and dispatching. As I continue on to the next slide then, continuing with execution and reporting, how do I then execute on that work order? How do I carry that out? Do I need mobility? system so that my technicians can execute effectively? And then how do I report on that? How do I learn from it? How do I proactively make changes based on uh, the analysis that I'm doing? And then continuing the last touch point there would be around environmental health and safety. Again, keeping workers safe as part of this process as we're executing throughout this life cycle, as we're executing throughout these capabilities, we wanna be able to, uh, to comply with our central requirements. We wanna identify and manage for hazards and risks and take corrective actions and so forth. Uh, continuing on then uh, with mobile side of it. So I know Srikant's gonna to touch on a product we have called Asset Manager, but conceptually this is, we, we've alert, alluded to this quite a bit in terms of the processes we just touched on, whether it be some of the scheduling and dispatching that we're doing, whether it be the execution that a technician is doing in the field, the ability, to tie together uh, and do this remotely and be able to, 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 to cut down on paper processing to decrease the overall work order processing time. That's a lot of benefit that customers are getting by leveraging mobile technologies. And then continuing on to the next slide, uh, the, the looking at the, if I bring this all together now, so on the, that circle again on the right upper right side there, these are the core capabilities that we just went through from a product perspective, you see how a lot of this gets realized through SAP portfolio. So Asset Intelligence Network, SAP Asset Strategy and Performance Management, SAP Predictive Asset Insights, our SAP Asset Manager mobile product, field service management, which there's a few different products in that area, but the, the ability to, to do the field service that we talked about, and then some of the S4 HANA products that uh, drive things from a resource scheduling perspective or a core asset management, maintenance management perspective, and so on. And then moving to the last couple slides and before I hand it over to Srikant, this slide, I won't spend a lot of time on it, but I think it's a good uh, really summary slide of everything we just talked about. It brings that end-to-end -end process flow together from 
initially collecting that asset information so that I can collaborate with my provider or with, with the different stakeholders. I can perform that risk and strategy assessment to be able to segment differently, to treat things differently, which generates dynamic demands that I can execute on differently, some, sometimes with predictive asset insights, or I can move into my planning, approval and orchestration, scheduling and dispatching, and then finally on the, the mobile side of it. So you can see, generally speaking, um, the different components and how it all comes together, what some of the outcomes are you're looking for there, and what some of the systems are, solutions are that are part of the process. Uh, moving to one more slide, I believe. Uh, actually, a couple more here. So this one, I wanted to architecturally describe how this all plays together. So. Uh, again, won't go through all the details here, but you see how we have a lot of different cloud applications, not only working in an integrated fashion together, but also leveraging common data across the different systems, being able to tie into external systems, whether they on that networking side, whether they be on the OEM, uh, uh, PLM side of things, if you're on the manufacturing and, and the initial engineering piece of the information, you, you might be working with um, EPC and contractors, your polling system from ERP, you're looking at things from an analytics perspective and so forth. So shows you a bit how a, a dynamic cloud architecture like this can tie in and plug into the existing world that you might already have. And then now finally, I believe the, the last slide, I just wanted to call out a couple example stories, some of the cu customers that we're working with doing this. Um, each of these has uh, I'll just summarize at a high level. They 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 touch on different parts of our solution. So, ERG Eurasian Resources Group is a company that we're doing some things with on the um, uh, on the the ASPM side. So around uh, how they're looking at managing their asset strategies and tying that in to their uh, to their maintenance planning. Uh, on the Gephardt side, doing more there from a, a, a networking and, and collaboration perspective, and Saldo Energia, a lot we're doing there with predictive maintenance, and finally Freeport MacMoran that we're uh, currently working. They're, they're a great example of a company that has taken advantage of the mobility solutions, for example, Asset Manager, to reduce to condense that operating, that, that processing time we talked about. So turning over work orders faster, enabling the, the, the field workforce to, to manage their processes more efficiently. So at this point, I believe that brings us to the end of my piece, Shrikant. And I would, at this time, very much welcome your input and your follow-up to take what I've described and go into more detail and tell us a bit more about what, what Crave Infotech is up to. Uh, Shikram, and you're on mute. You're on mute, sir. Yeah, I was on mute. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. Excellent overview about uh, uh, the intelligent asset management. Uh, I think there are, every day I feel I learn something new. And today was also uh, another day. So thank you very much. Uh, Sunny, do you have anything, question or poll or anything? Uh, yes, I have, but I think uh, once you describe about the maturity curve we have, I think we okay. can, people can okay. audience. Yeah. So, um, once again, thank you, Tom, to paint that picture, right? Painting the picture is very important. Now, uh, we work very closely with SAP and so with our customers. Uh, and what I'm going to talk today about is how we can help or enhance the SAP offerings uh, through working with Crave. Uh, that will be the goal for the next 15 minutes. And I'll also give a quick demo of the asset manager so that you can get uh, a glimpse at the product too. So where we um, pride ourselves is to help our customers to go from reactive to predictive. So that's the intelligent asset management maturity model, right? A um, lot of times what we have seen is it's hard for a customer to understand where they are onto a maturity model, where they are today and how they can go to the end goal. Everybody wants to be uh, predictive um, at the predict stage, predictive stage, but it's not easy. Uh, you have to lay foundation. You have to make sure you take the right steps because uh, in order for 
any organization to reach the predictive uh, capability, you got to have right data. And if the data is not right, the predictions are never going to be right. So let's talk through that. So this is the maturity curve. Um, I know there are few organizations still at the reactive mode. Uh, there are a lot of them are into the preventive. Uh, we use different solutions. And I have another slide which talks about that. Some of you might be into the condition phase. And, and as far as I know, very few are into predictive. And I think we'll have a little bit of poll. But there are ways to get from every phase to the next phase. So I have a slide around that where <clears throat> this is the slide which typically really um, I we used to explain. So on, let's start from the left-hand side. I used to have animation and uh, our marketing team changed the theme and the animation is gone. But start from the left side. So first of all, what we need is we need a system of record. And that's where ERP comes into picture. Uh, we need system of record for equipment master. We need a system of record for uh, um, bill of materials, spares, order processing, calibration, corrective facility, different type of um, managing different type of maintenance related activities in an ERP system. Once we have ERP system, I think first part of the digitization is done. Uh, we have a system of record. Then we need to see how we can um, do a data acquisition better. Data acquisition as the source is always the best. Uh, so if somebody is on a paper, you are printing from SAP, people are going out, bringing the uh, uh, data on a piece of paper, of course it works, but there are so many touch points, fail, points of failure. Uh, data is incorrectly entered, we all know this. So that's where um, mobile workforce management applications or the mobile applications comes into picture. So that's here into uh, the picture here. Uh, some customers have moved to IoT that helps you to bring in data real time much faster. Uh, and then there are collaboration networks available uh, which will help the different constituents of an ownership of an asset. So manufacturer, distributor, uh, end user, leasing agency, leaser, they all will have um, a, a network whereby they can share, like there is a recall, or there is a problem with certain equipment. So before everybody else get into trouble, it's all shared. Uh, so, that, so there are collaboration networks available. So I, I consider this as data acquisition side. So we got the system of record. We, got, we know how to uh, acquire the data digitally at the source, and then the real analysis starts. So we fix the uh, data, now we can analyze. So we have, that's where the performance risk and strategy assessment tools are available and also the predictive analytics. We have right data, we are, we are able to uh, do the right assessment, we are able to predict, um, and then those predictions, they spit out the recommendation and corrective actions. And those corrective actions basically get fed back to the um, mobile solutions for capturing and, and taking care of those corrective actions. So this is the, this is the loop we have seen uh, organizations are working. And of course, whichever stage you are, there are different tools available. There are SAP tools, there are some tools which are, uh, which are basically uh, co-built with SAP uh, to supplement what SAP has from partners like us and and uh, this is this is not different this is what probably um, Tom painted in a, in a slightly different way from SAP's product perspective so if you look at the ERP that's our SAP plant maintenance service management uh, collaboration network will be asset intelligence network AIN workforce management that's asset manager and there are some two tools we have from SAP side uh, performance risk assessment is ASTM, uh, predictive analytics is PI, and so we have tools which are available to make that happen. Now let's talk briefly about uh, Craves, what is our innovation? So this is how we have seen most of the industries, this kind of end-to-end -end map uh, for the functionality map. Um, so there is a scheduling, there is dispatch, 
uh, if you have field service that you are you would like to track your resources that's where the tracking and map based dispatch comes into picture uh, if you have large workforce you need a planner planner should be able to do planning from wherever they are uh, you will need an approvals for work orders notification to ensure that right people are raising it right people are and right uh, uh, work is being carried out and finally how to execute that work on mobile so this is kind of a um, layout of different applications uh, for an end to end maintenance process of course the predictive aspm they sit on top of this based upon the information available and there are different uh, tools available from sap and creo for example um, we do do asset manager but we have a specialized application built for calibration uh, and we also do the fsm but we have work clearance management uh, which gets plugged into the asset manager or into the fiori uh, stack we have asset inventory and inspection that's very specially built for the transmission um, uh, uh, and and highly um, outdoor asset uh, inventory management solution we have so those are some of the uh, some of the um, co innovations we bring to the table to supplement what sap has as uh, uh, tom mentioned um, are you going to get some polls uh, sunny i see something popped up um yes uh, i have launched a poll question based on the explanation that you have done before be, uh, about reactive to predictive so that audience can understand where they are standing right now so sunny so, would like to get your help to get this poll done while we continue this uh, discussion it's probably going to take a few seconds so please go ahead and uh, fill that poll which just appeared on your screen and i'll continue to um, discuss about the asset manager so of course asset manager uh, is a product which is currently um, working with uh, ios and android um, the windows version is still in progress i believe this is slated for early next year and that's very exciting i know there were some customers who were um, who were really wanted to continue to use the windows because of their it policies uh, so coming to the asset manager itself uh, it's very easy to use it's completely enabled offline application works on as i mentioned android and uh, android and ios out of the box and it has few very uh, industry specific uh, components like crew management meter management for uh, utilities or energy industry uh, customer service so it manages very efficiently customer facing work and field operation workers in addition to that um it has capability to handle the breakdown corrective preventive all that kind of uh, type of work along with the measuring points um the mass the documents attachments uh, and ability to capture the catalog codes so let me uh, i'm going to go to the another um, screen and walk you guys through the the asset manager application so i'm going to share from some other screen to me screen shares there we go okay so this is how the asset manager looks like and um, so this is a demo you can also access this go to um, if you are on io um, apple or ios device go to apple uh, store uh, and uh, download sap asset manager uh, it's very quick download couple minutes and uh, this works very well out of the box so when you log in you have on the top you have a map um, there are routes uh, you can if you have routes defined you can bring the route information um, out of the box high priority jobs are displayed uh, you can change that if needed and then the time sheet actually it displays time sheet for last 14 days so it's a very good handy for a technician to know what he has done and how the time sheet was filled in and at the bottom you see some links so there is a link for work order there is a link link for equipment um, sunny maybe you can take the poll out and uh, uh, notification functional location 
there is a functionality for reminder so technician can create reminder for himself unfortunately it doesn't link to anything but it's a good uh, reminder functionality uh, and finally crew management so you can manage crews uh, from here when i say manage crews it's basically you can assign people to a crew um, and then uh, that also helps you to do the time confirmation it's a little bit clunky but um, it does the job <clears throat> so let's look at the work orders so this is the list of work orders i can filter them by several criteria i can sort them by priority description due date id i can filter them um, uh, i can create favorites and i can look at them if there are too many um, I can filter by who they are assigned to. Um, I can filter by um, my work orders, so all the work orders which are assigned to me, uh, type, statuses, and then priority. So almost I think everything is available here. Which let me do search by priority, and you can see there is a smaller subset has created now. Very good search here. Uh, it's a global search i can search for anything i just search for oil and there is order comes up so that is also a very cool functionality um, it also tells me what's the priority and what's current status so uh, i can clock in so clock in means this another good uh, feature in the asset manager is it captures time by itself it doesn't have to worry about technician doesn't have to worry about how much time i spent it will capture the time it has functionality to put it on hold if the person has to go and do something else <clears throat> so in the work order i can see also it shows me right on the top how many measuring points are there for me to complete for this work order which is cool right uh, so we have uh, location um, if there are multiple operations they will be listed like this you can get the details i can get into the uh, details of the operation i can look at uh, the materials and at the bottom uh, the parts will be there what are the materials assigned of course i can see the functional location the equipment and if there are which order is assigned to this operation if i don't remember i can go that if there are sub operation they will also be appearing here parts so i can see uh, the parts which is already assigned and reserved i can add more parts this is very good actually and i can do a good search so this search is also um, let's see and i put hollow and there are so many hollow shafts available uh, and basically i can search by any field available here uh, i can also scan if you have your uh, inventory is barcoded then i can scan them that's i think another quick way uh, to get that information <clears throat> also i can issue the parts so this is how i can issue the parts i can issue partially i can issue completely so that's kind of a very simple way of navigating through a work order uh, even when i am inside the work order i can um, so this is where i have the readings so there are seven measuring points which i should be taking measurement and then i can take them all in sequence um, so that uh, measuring point data collection functionality is also available <clears throat> similarly uh, so there is two type of process flow available in asset manager one is at the operation level another is at the header level depending upon the choice it's a company wide choice depending upon the choice it will have the flow or the um, the transaction flow uh, gets set for each user i also have access to the notification um i have seen organizations who do not send notification to the mobile uh, they stick to notification is a planning tool uh, or planning object it gets planned order gets created it comes to the asset manager people work on it they confirm the time they confirm the uh, uh, confirm the catalog codes so of course catalog codes are part of the notification <clears throat> so again this is the list of notification it shows me uh, malfunction details business partner if it is customer specific equipment functional location and then uh, uh, and if there are documents they will appear here i can also attach document i need if i need to
So let me go back and see what's going on with the order we selected. So I can clock in. It will either I can transfer, so I can transfer to somebody else, or I can start, and it will update the status. Um, and then I have an option to clock out. And I'll show you. See now I can see started and clocked in. That means the order is started and I'm actually working on this order right now. When I do clock out, I can put it on hold uh, because I need to do something else. And I can, it's asked me, do you want to add time? And of course you can define what's the minimum duration. Right now it's 15. If you have different attendance codes, you can pick them. Um, sometimes people just hide it. Activity type. If you have different cost code, you can use that. Uh, okay. Who worked on it? Mm, absolutely. I haven't selected the operation. So there are good. This code is operation number 10. There's no sub operation. And that's how I, I uh, enter my time. Uh, when I go on hold, when I come back, um, it will again give me an option to start a okay, clock in. So that's how the timer continues and it's accumulate time against the work order. Um, another good functionality here is the functional location hierarchy. So what do you see in SAP in the back end? We have an opportunity to see the similar hierarchy here. So you see, because I picked up at a lower level, uh, this is how I can continue to see the hierarchy. And there's nothing below that. Um, so this is the functional location and there is an, uh, actually the second functional location and there are no equipments underneath. But if I pick something else, I should be able to see the whole hierarchy here. So these are some of the, uh, I just wanted to give you guys a glimpse of how it looks like. Uh, very easy to use. I can also drive it from the map and it will come with the full map. And I can see the details. So this is a work order. And uh, I can just zoom in uh, how we typically use our tablet or mobile uh, applications. So that about asset manager. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to uh, talk through. I'm going to go back to the presentation. Stop. Feel free to uh, put your questions if you have any in the chat. So, so the, you have seen, um, I was able to give you a glimpse of what's available in Asset Manager. Now let's talk about what's new and what's our vision. So Windows, as I mentioned, it's coming in 2022. Um, the, this is a little bit older slide. So in supervisor role, it's already available in 2105. So now supervisor uh, can actually look at what is completed probably comment on it before approval and supervisor can approve the order and then the next step will happen. So that functionality is already available. Uh, Multi-user support is also available. Digital signature is also available. And uh, creation of asset and functional location, that's coming later uh, part of this year, very soon. Now, in addition to, uh, if you have a field service, or field workforce and you want to make sure they are at the right place at the right time, they're available for your customer. There are no challenges with them. There are no safety challenges, security challenges. We have a tool, um, it's called um, basically asset performance and automation. This tool helps you to track the location using geo enablement or um, um, telematics. Uh, so these are the small G GPS devices can go, or you can even track through the mobile uh, devices or tablets. This is available these days. And then this gives you a lot of a flexibility to define routes, define, uh, see the people on the map. You can see your jobs or deliveries, your people, everything at one location. And this tool also has an ability to drag and drop so that um, they can be, um, uh, all the assignment can be done typically for the trigger field, right? Emergency work on the map. Um, there are several other slides, but I'm gonna just browse through them. You'll get the access. How do we work, right? So when we do the implementation, we follow the design thinking methodology. We have very strong governance model. 
we we define very well upfront what's the joint responsibility we call rasi matrix very well defined so everybody knows what is in addition to these we have also created few packages one of the challenge customer has is okay i'm going to buy licenses now what's the cost for implementation who is going to help me how do i define the uh, boundaries around the implementation is it going to be a fixed cost so what we did is we create did amplify packages for a specific scope what is the cost uh, we specify that cost upfront so there are no surprises uh, and helps you Uh, to make sure that either this can be a pilot or it, it, you can take on a specific small organization uh, through this scope so you have a starting point so we have a asset manager package we have calibration and also we have aspm uh, jump start so there are different packages already defined a little bit about crave infotech i know i spoke all about the product the demo so we are a 13 year old organization this um, this slide uh, basically tells where we are in the journey and how we progress through them uh, this is the key statistics about us um, on the right hand side it talks about who are our uh, partners sap zebra so another thing about us is when we come we bring in everything together at one place so that includes the uh, anything you need to do in sap backend the integration point point the mobile application and hardware also um, so we partner with zebra honeywell and uh, android all of our um, so what we do is also certified through zebra so we know exactly what we are doing we also work very closely with here amazon and google we also work with esri uh, if that is a choice um, from the certifications uh, iso 9001 iso 27001 so this the there is a security and uh, um, aspect is already covered we are a uh, diverse organization uh, so if you, that helps you to make and there are several awards so we were ace award winner uh, we are pinnacle award finalist and there are several awards at our belt finally um, what else right um, so eam is one area where we are very passionate about but in addition to that warehouse management and there are some key solutions we have around the supply chain to help implementing sap better and bring in the productivity and this is the list of all of our applications they are available on the sap app store and they all complement to what sap uh, brings to the table small list of our customers life sciences utilities water and oil and gas manufacturing it has retail uh, biotech uh, so almost uh, in every segment you can think of so with that uh, we come to the end thank you very much uh, over to you sunny uh, thank you shrikan uh, shrikan uh, we have couple questions and one is from kyle uh, the one is can the cost of material integrate with sap financials yes so um asset manager is an extension to sap so as soon as there is a inventory uh, being an issued material is issued uh, and as soon as the asset manager syncs to the back end it's updated into the mm which is which is already integrated with uh, financials yes thank you and we have one more question from rajendra pande uh, what is the sap roadmap to support external maintenance by third party contractor who does the service entry hmm so would you like to take that uh yes i can take a crack so i want to make could you repeat the question though i want to make sure i heard the maintenance integration part yeah uh, what is the sap roadmap to support external maintenance by third party contractor and who does the service entry Right. So, I mean, generally speaking, we can integrate to non-SAP maintenance and service systems. I think um, one example, what we're also starting to see a little bit more of is crowdsourcing. So on the field service side, uh, we actually have a crowdsourcing um, uh, pr product. So if you have external technicians, for example, that you use, I guess, I guess there could be two parts of that question. One is our 
that there be third party maintenance systems that are not SAP plant maintenance or customer service? And could there be external third party technicians a part of the process? So the short answer is where we do, we work with both of those scenarios. And for the technician piece of it specifically, um, we can do things like crowdsourcing through our FSM capabilities. We can integrate with Field Glass, which is our contingent worker business network that we have as part of the SAP portfolio. So the short answer is yes, there, there's, there's, a, there's opportunities to do that. Okay, thank, thank you, you. And uh, we have one more question from Rajendra. Uh, I do not find equivalent uh, of SAP transactions, uh, IHO1 uh, asset hierarchy in Fury Apps mobile solution. Is it in the roadmap? Uh, yeah, that's a pretty, I, I can't answer it that low a level. If you want to send me that specific question, Sonny, I can try to find an answer. Definitely. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, we'll share that question. <clears throat> Great. Great. Any anybody has anything else? I think we don't have any more questions. So I think we come to an end. So thank you, Tom, and thank you, Shrikant, for your sharing your experience here. Uh, I think we have one more questions. Is there any way for order summit? Uh, summit, can you please it's, elaborate? It's, uh, I'll just let summit allow to talk. So Sabit, you can people. ask question if you want. Uh, yeah, let him ask question. Summit, uh, I have allowed you to talk. Can you please ask? Uh, uh, hi, Srikant. Uh, good morning. Good morning. So, Trishrikant, I just want to know, is there any way that uh, we can uh, use uh, creation of the order from the Fury apps, just like uh, GUI, as it is the way we are doing the creation of the order and notifications, all those fields, uh, is it possible that all those uh, fields will be coming in the uh, Fury screen directly? Without any yeah, there is, a, there is a create work order function available and uh, that's actually much better user interface than what it is in backend right the backend has so many fields they may not be required yes that interface is available so we can create notification we can create work order both of them but things are like uh, uh, while creation of the order only in the front end screen we are able to see only few fields like uh, uh, order types uh, order number and equipment uh, around four or five fields we are able to see in the fury uh, standard fury apps is there any way that we'll able to because business is asking uh, to provide uh, multiple fields uh, he want to <coughs> enter the functional locus and he want to enter the priority in the input screen itself only those uh, stops he is asking so i just want to know yeah it is available uh, i can probably uh, take this offline if needed but uh, you you have description type of work order planning plan priority functional location equipment yeah. business area work center main work center yeah. and also they can create operation so that part is already available um, you can create multiple operation uh, that is also available yes currently we are using 1809 is it uh, uh, compatible on that any app is this there? is 1809 i don't know if 1809 but i know the latest one has uh, 1809 FS02 version we are using. Uh, okay, okay. So why don't we connect offline and sure, let's I'll have a that. chat about it. I'll, I'll okay. love to do that. Uh, yeah. Already I have raised a request uh, to you. Let's uh, have a discussion on that. Thanks, sir. Think, Thanks, you're sir. welcome. I think Kyle is asking for some link, right? You got that? Uh, yes, I think he's uh, just asking about the webinar link about okay. uh, recording and I'll just that okay. he can share that with colleagues. Yeah. So I think we are done with the questions. So I would just thank you Shrikant and Tom for sharing your experience today. And uh, thank you so much everyone for joining today's sessions. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you. All.